in reference to trading. And specifically, we're gonna to talk today about using a beginner risk. Because a lot of people trade, and they think you have to risk this huge amount of money to trade, but that's just not true. So I'm gonna talk about a week, this was before the holiday, of day trades and options to show if you'd done all the trades, done every single trade, options trade and day trade, how much money you could have made with an average risk of $1,000. Now you could risk less, so I'm using the thousand. You could risk more, okay? But the point of today is that <laughs> you can trade for a living. If you have a good system, you can use it to make money and you don't need some astronomical risk in order to be successful and make money. And I think a lot of people uh, misinterpret that thinking that you need all of this huge risk. Again, if you have the funds available, you can risk more than $1,000. But no matter what, in order to trade, okay, you have to have a set strategy that you use on a regular basis in order to be successful. So can you trade for a living? The answer is yes. We're going to talk about that today. If you're here and you've seen me before, I appear on Fox News. I appear on every single channel talking about the stock market, talking about the economy. A lot of interesting things. It's the week after a holiday. Volume was low in the market today. It could be low tomorrow, but earnings season in the market starts on Friday. So it's a really, really great time to trade because from Friday on, pretty much running up into Labor Day, it's earnings season. Why is that significant? Because stocks that report earnings tend to have large moves. That gives you a lot of opportunity to make money as long as you get the move right. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP if you have questions. I recognize some of you familiar faces. Uh, some of you are here. I don't know if you're interested in the class or not. The class for July is coming up. It is actually this weekend, July 13th and 14th. And if you're interested, you can email me after the class. It's Shark Week, so I'm doing a Shark Week special, which is if you sign up by Friday, which is a deadline, you will receive the live trading room free for one year and the options newsletter free for one year. Again, this ends Friday the 12th. The class tuition is $69.99. Everyone pays the same and the class is online. If you wanna sign up after this webinar today, you can email me, you can start trading this week. You can start trading actually before uh, you even do the class. And some people signed up last week and have already started. So it's a good time to trade and get going. And the sooner the better, why? Like I said, it's earnings season. I can't even believe we're more than halfway through 2024. And before you know it, it's gonna be the holidays. Again, I just mentioned Labor Day. After, after Labor Day, you come back, it's the fall, and then it's the holidays. I feel like time is just flying by. But the one year of trades, both options and day trades, is a huge support for people after the class to take my trades after the class. And what I've found in all the years of trading and teaching people since I've had the business is what people want most, okay, is a support system. They really want a support system in order to train so that they know what to do. They want someone to call the trade, tell them where to get in, where to get out, all of that. Again, the learning is extremely, extremely important when you're trading, because if you understand what to do, you're gonna have more conviction, you're gonna trade better, you'll be able to take more risk. And again, you won't kill a trade, even if it's down, you will give it a chance to work. If you understand what's going on, and again, conviction is a big part of that. I say conviction, you could say confidence, okay? If you understand a system, you have confidence in that system. And again, people really want a support system, they need a support system, okay? And again, I see some people coming in late, we've already got started. But you can ask questions at the bottom in the chat. Now, getting back to what I was saying, we're halfway through this year. If you're trading actively and you're not making money this year or not making as much money as you want to this year, then it's a good time to kind of step back and reevaluate. Actually, you know, the times when the market is closed over the holidays, like last week we had July 4th, it's a good time to reevaluate what you're doing. Sometimes you say, well, I'm doing really well. I want to risk more money. Sometimes you say, I'm not doing as well as I want to and I need to change my strategy or change what I'm doing. 
again, in reference to trading, sometimes people are trading for a long time and they blame themselves and say, I'm not doing well, I'm not doing this. But maybe it's really just the strategy. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's not a lack of discipline or anything else like that. Maybe the strategy that you're using just flat out doesn't work, you know? And again, in order to make money, you've got to have a quality system that is so important because if you don't have a system that makes money that consistently wins in the market you're not going to make money sometimes anything works you can basically gamble or take a trade in any direction sometimes it works if you trade the trend trading the trend of any particular stock or even the market is not going to work on a consistent basis many people have been going along the market the market's been continuing up that's not going to last forever and you can't go along the market every day even if it's in an uptrend like it's been and expect to make money. You can't even buy support or buy the dip, as people call it, all the time in the market and make money as well, even if it actually is, again, like I said, trending in that direction, okay? So think about it. If you use your brain, you say, wait a minute, this makes total sense. I need some type of system in order to be consistent. And you know, otherwise, again, it's a crapshoot. You're gambling, you're going with the market, or again, you're trying to trend trade. And again, if you're swing trading and you want to trend trade, well, that's all well and good, but you may be in a position that you may not book the money for weeks and months and years. What I do is very, very different than swing trading. I am actively trading where I'm pulling money and chunking money out of the market on a consistent basis. So in order to do that, I have to find stocks that are going to have a move and particularly a big move or preferably a large move it's great if it happens on the day that I take it. If not, if I'm in an option and I've got a week to take it, or if I do it for a few days, uh, then I'm trying to get the move in the time that I do the option. Now, I'm doing the weekly options again, but the whole idea is to get a large move, a big move. One of the big trades that we did in the last week was Tesla. It had a large move. In fact, it had a larger move than I thought it would, and I got out and it kept going, but of course it was the July 4th, it was the holiday, Again, it's very important also to book money. And again, I see some people signing in late. Down here, where I'm saying hi is where you chat. If you have questions, <clears throat> okay? So again, if you signed in late, we're talking today about training. We're talking about earning a living trading. And we're specifically today gonna talk about using a beginner risk amount, which I'm, I'm stating is $1,000, which we're gonna go over the trades for the last week. But again, you could risk less you can risk more. So what is the most vital part of my system? It's the 26 points. So I get up in the morning and I go through a process. It's a checklist. If you decide to take my class and learn my system, this is what you're going to learn. This is the whole shebang, okay? If I get up in the morning, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., before the market opens, I take my time and I rate gaps. I'm trying to determine if the stock that I want to trade, whatever it happens to be, is going to drop, fall, or rally. Okay, so again, when I'm trading, I'm trying to determine the best thing that is going to go as fast as it possibly can and have the biggest move possible. And how do I do that? I use a 26 point rating system, and this is what you'll learn in the class. This is it. I'm not necessarily trying to get 26 points. If I get 20 points or more, then I take it in the direction of the gap. Again, if it's under 20, the rule is not to do it. Like, I'm not going to do it at all. So there may be some days where I don't have any trades. And we're going to go over, like I said, the last week. And again, in the last week, if there wasn't anything that rated good, you don't do it. So we're going to go over the day trades first. Again, what I want to show people is that you, in fact, can trade with a smaller risk and make money and make enough money actually to earn a living. So in the one week of day trades, so we're going to go through it. Again, this is before the holiday. I didn't trade last week. I closed the room last week over the holiday. There were five trades, four winners, one loser, and zero break even. Okay. Beginner price traffic uh, profits for this week, um, 5,340. Okay. And again, this is an average risk of 1,000. So win ratio is 80%. So when I trade, when I call the trades in the room, I'm giving you the entry, I'm giving you the stop. The stop means that if it goes over the number, it's going to get stopped out, meaning I would take a loss. You have to use stops in day trades, okay? It's a limit order stop. It's going to take you out 
and I'd rather be taken out. The stop is like the insurance because otherwise the trade could trail against you have an unlimited risk. One of the other things I found in teaching people for as long as I've been teaching people as well is that people are all over the place with their risk. If you don't ever stop in, you essentially have unlimited risk. You could have one bad train and then you might have to take five trains in order to make up the difference, okay? And again, that, that, that's, that's just crazy, okay? You don't wanna do that to yourself. You want to have consistent results, so that means risking a consistent amount each day, okay? And again, any questions, pop into the room. So let's start out with this was 624. So again, we're looking at a chart of Tesla. Tesla closed here, gapped up, rallied, this was a day trade that we did in the room. It was on Monday the 24th, okay? So again, this, you see right here, we went long, and here was the trade. We entered it at 185.80. This is, again, if you took a beginner risk of 500 shares, the risk was $950. This is not an exact science. You could have taken 600, 700, 400. The idea is that you didn't take an exorbitant risk, or you don't have to. You could have made $800. Again, a day trade is a trade that you would need a margin account to take. Now, I get this question all the time. Uh, the question is, again, if you take a trade, all right, and you're doing it on margin, what do I mean? Well, you times the amount of the cost of stock of, of the stock, whatever it is, like here, this is Tesla, you could say well, this is a little pricey, times the number of shares divided by how much buying power a margin you get from the broker. So if you have a brokerage account, you understand that. You have a margin account or you don't have a margin account. You don't need a margin account to do options. You can open up a cash account. We're gonna go over the options next. But for day trades, you do need a margin account. You can go prop where you could get 10 to one margin. So if you have $20,000, you could get 10 to one margin would give you what? $200,000 of buying power. So for example, something like Tesla, you could have taken more than a thousand shares of this. We're just talking about example with 500. Again, if you go retail, you get four to one margin or buying power. Everyone says, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Again, if you're risking a set amount, that has nothing to do with the margin because we're in and out of these trades in minutes. So I'm not holding Tesla here on this particular day in the day trade overnight. When I say day trade, that means I'm getting in and I'm getting out of it. I'm entering and exiting the trade between 9.30 and 4 on that day. Okay, does everyone understand that? Does everyone get what we're talking about with margin? But we're going to go through all of them here, David. So that was that. Okay, this was Monday. Tuesday, there were no trades. No gaps rated per checklist. We didn't do anything, okay? Again, wasn't earnings season yet. There just wasn't any gaps. We didn't do anything. Then we did the SPY. This was on the 26th. This stopped. Entry was 543.50. Stop was 544.10. That means if it hits over this number, I'll go back to the chart in a minute, you're going to lose. And that is what happened here. Again, this is an average. You could have taken a little bit less. But again, 1,200 doesn't concern me if someone's risking an average of 1,000. You try to get as close as possible. What concerns me is if people risk 3,000 and they mean to risk 1,000. Anyways, let's go back to it. 626 was here. So again, what did it do? Stock close here, gap down. So the spy gap down but failed. Failed, we shorted it and we got stopped. So you see where it was? We had to stop snug as a bug here take it over, and it went poop. But again, I got stopped, and you would have too, you would have taken the loss, but do you see if you hadn't, look where it went. It ran all the way up. So again, you would have had an unlimited loss, and you don't wanna have that. So you could have risked, you could have lost four grand or whatever that day. So the stop really is like the insurance. I know people don't like using stops, I don't know why, but I know that from teaching people for a long time, but. You know, you got to use them. You can always retake it. Anyways, we did another trade that day. We did BAC. So again, this was a short two. Stock close here, gap down, open dropped. Now BAC worked. Now BAC was a good trade. We entered it at 39.15. I'll go back and show you in a minute. 3,000 shares was a risk of 10.50. We did an ad. We doubled up. 
So you could have plopped it on. This is basically like two trades in one. 6,000 shares. Average price was 39.12. Exit was 38.60. This is a good trade. And you could have made $3,120. So let's go back to the BAC. Here is the gap. Stock close here, gap down, open, dropped. Again, you did the trade, got the drop, boom, out, done. Like actually, this kept going from where I got out of this, but this was a nice strain. So you would have done the spy, stopped. You would have done the BAC, made money. And then again, you would have covered the loss from the spy and you still would have been up and that's okay. So again, you can say, well, okay, I wanna do this many trades per day or this many trades per day. You can't have an unlimited amount of trades per day. You don't can't say I'm gonna trade, trade, trade all day because then you could take you know, 10 trades and lose and blow up your account. And people do that. It's crazy, but people do it. You say, well, okay, well, I'm going to do three a day or four a day or two a day. I don't think one is enough. But if you want to do one, that's fine. I think two is good. Three is good, okay? Because again, here, if you did the SPY, taking the stop, you would have lost for the day instead of doing the BAC and you would have made money, okay? Anyways, that was a good trade. Then the next day, we did the WBA. Stock closed here, our stock closed here, gap down. Closed up here around 15 and something. Opened in the morning around 12 something. Open, dropped, we shorted it. Okay, this was the 27. So what did we do with this one? This was, you say, oh my gosh, this is so cheap. Yeah, but it worked. Uh, 12.48, we shorted it. Risk was 12.60. Again, I was looking for $12, was a target, it broke it. I think the low of the day here was 1170 something, 1192, you could have made $1,680. This is a great trade. Could have taken 3,000 shares of it. Again, someone, you have to understand, you say, oh, well, 3,000, you say, well, oh my God, I would have needed $37,440. No, if you had a prop account, you would have only needed $3,744 and you could have made 1680, okay? So again, I'm trying to emphasize here with this particularly, and I and I could have done, I could have done all kinds of different examples, but the point is that people always say I need I need this much money. If you want to train, you can start out with a risk of a thousand dollars and do perfectly perfectly well. When I started out, I was risking a lot less. Okay, so I mean, it you don't need you know, two hundred grand to trade even to day trade, okay? And there are prop accounts, like I said, that offer 10 to one margin. So this was a nice train. It was not expensive, had a lot of volume, had a move. And again, here was the gap. So what do I do and what will you learn from me in the class? You're gonna learn how to find the WBA, rate it, and determine that it's gonna fall. Because it could have flipped. It could have rallied. It didn't, it fell. Remember, trading is about odds. It's an odds game if that's how you want to look at it not every trade is going to work there is no 100 percent in anything you do okay so it's about playing the odds you say i want to put the odds in my favor that this trade is a going to go whether it's up or down again we're i'm telling you what we're doing here tesla was along this was a short and then you also want to put the odds in your favor that it's going to have a large enough move to make it worthwhile to even take the trade at all or take the risk because again if i'm shorting this at 1248 i, I don't want to get out of this at 1240. is that well eight cents well it's eight cents it's like what's the point of eight cents and that would be considered like a scalp you know but that's not even worth a trade that i would take okay something like this again you can look at the bars on this. 50 cents is a pretty decent size move for WBA. Okay? I'd love a dollar. You know, 75 cents, 80 cents, whatever. It basically did go 75, 80 cents on this day from tip to tail. Okay? But again, it's the whole idea of looking for something with the accuracy that's going to have the big move and then follow through as well. Okay? Then we did the Mew. Okay, we also we did two trades this day. Uh, stock closed here, gap down. This was June 27th. Again, closed up here. Gap down here, open, dropped, fell. So let's look at the mu. Again, 134.10, 400 shares is perfectly fine. You don't have to take thousands and thousands and thousands of shares. 
You might not even be able to with your buying power. Anyways, 400 shares was a risk of 1,200. Exit was 131.75. You could have made $940. This was an even, I'm just gonna show you here, this was a day. You could have held this longer. This is where I, again, was in the room, called the exit in the room, but you could have held it longer and you could have held it all the way down, okay? So again, you could have made more, but if you're following me in the room, then you did as I called it. But there were two trades this day, remember? So you could have done the BA, a WBA and made 1680, and you could have done the MU and made 940. That's a good day. And you traded for a couple of minutes in the morning. You would have been done by 1030. So again, this is, you know, people always say, oh my gosh, I have to do this. Again, the most vital part is the 26 points, is a rating system, that's how you figure it out. And there was one loser, which you have to account for. There was a day we didn't do any trades, and then Friday, actually, I closed the room uh, for the July 4th holiday. So actually, this was two trades in one day, which we don't always do, um, but a total of five trades and one loser. So any questions about day trading? Any questions about Anything I said so far? Is everybody with me? Now again, whether or not you, um, you know, want to trade for a living or not, okay? And even say you say you want to, you're like, oh my God, I can't live on $5,000 a week or $20,000 a month on average, this would be. For the day trades the, 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 that's not the point the point is if you learn how to trade and you can make an average of this amount per week consistently prove it to yourself you can you can increase your risk and you can make more and you could grow your account your trading account so that you could risk more and again i have no problem with people risking more even if they have smaller accounts if they know the system did the class and know what they're doing you know, because they'll stay within the parameters. So it's the idea of starting where you are and then feeling good about it and proving to yourself that you can do it and then moving forward and then starting to risk more. Like I talked about last week was a holiday. Well, I closed the room. People took off. I said to everybody, look at how you're doing. If you want to increase your risk, you can. When would you start to do that? Friday. Friday when earning season starts, which is the 12th. Okay. So Again, you don't increase your risk during the holiday periods. You increase your risk during the busy season if you're doing well. But it, it, this isn't like you have to stay at this level forever. And again, you could start out smaller. I'm show, You could have taken half the size that I'm showing you here. You could have risked an average of five or 600 per trade. The point is to show you that you don't have to risk as much as I'm risking, for example, um, and again, everybody that's here, you're on the, you're on the marketing uh, emails, you're seeing my results, you're seeing the stats. I've been doing this for a long time. Some people are risking more than me. You have to get to a place where you say, I get it. I know it. I know when Melissa calls a Mew and I have 100% conviction, Mew's going to fall too. When, you're t when you learn it, it's a process. It's like, I don't know what they say. You take a class and you do the whole class and then it's like you retain, I don't know, 80% of the information after the class. And then, then you forget some things. You have to go back, then you review it, then you do it, then you're trading, then you go back and then he asked me another question. Again, that's the whole point, like I was talking about at the beginning with the support system that I offer people every day in the trading room is invaluable. Especially when I do specials like this with the room free for an entire year, you can ask me questions. After we're out of the MU, I don't want to go over questions before we train because we have to focus on making money first. But they could say, oh, what, why did you like that MU again? And I didn't think that MU was going to be that good, but it was or whatever. And that's the whole point where you, you reinforce. It's the reinforcement, you understand what I'm saying, that you're doing every time you take a trade and every time you book the money and every time you reciprocate and continue to do it on a consistent basis. Because so many people are trading for so many years and they're losing money. And if you're here and you know what I'm talking about, if you've been attempting to trade for a long time and you're not doing well, you understand. You almost have to prove to yourself. You don't have to prove it to me. I know it works. I've been doing this forever. But you have to prove it to yourself. And the only way you're going to do that is if you're doing it. 
Uh, do I use short interest percent or gap up screener 4% or better? No, I don't use a screener for anything with percentages. No, I don't. Nothing that is anything with the 26 points has anything to do with percentages. If that was the case, it'd be, it'd be you wouldn't have to use your brain. It would be easy to trade. You could just say doing, doing, doing and say percent, percent. It's not like that. Nothing that I do is about percentages. Um, are all the trades, all the trades take place early for day trades? Dan is asking about day trades. Um, if I don't have any trades, if, if say I rate a gap, I get up in the morning tomorrow, whatever, I rate something. I said, oh my God, this rate's beautiful. I love it. And it doesn't set up and it doesn't set up and it doesn't set up and it's 10.05. I'm probably not doing anything that day and I'm not doing the one that I rated. So in an ideal world, I've got to see that setup pretty quickly. It's not a rule, Dan, but think about it. Again, use your head. If I don't see a setup in 30 minutes, 30 minutes is like forever. So the stock then basically could be rallying for 30 minutes. Well, I mean, the chances of me wanting to short it is probably zero or you could do vice versa. So the stock gaps up and it's falling for 30 minutes. The chances of me wanting to go long it is probably zero too. So it's just, you've got to, we're, we, we have 9.30 to four is six and a half hours. It sounds like a long time, but it's actually not. It's actually not a long time at all. So again, I want to see that go pretty quickly. Not that I wouldn't do something at 10, but again, pushing up where you're getting into an hour, you know, you're like, what the heck am I sitting here for? It's like, it's just not there. You may just, it's just not there today. And then you don't do anything. And then you don't. Um, I'm do limit orders, but if you want to do market orders, um, David, that's completely up to you. Uh, that's not a rule or anything, but I do limit orders. Um, when I call the train, I call the end train. The spread is the spread. I mean, if this, you know, it depends what the spread is. But if I say to do it at, let me just go back here. Um, what are we just on here? Mu. Like if I say 134.10, or I'm just saying 10, I'm just giving the pennies. Say the spread in mu is 134.30, or say the spread is 30 cents. That would be wide for mu, but say it was in the open. Say I say 10, you're hitting it at 134.10, okay? That's where you're going to hit it. So again, the difference between the bid and the ask is the spread. You're hitting it when it hits 134.10 you're going to get filled at 134.10. You're not going to get filled at the higher price in a short. So you're doing it at the lower number of the two numbers. That's where you're going to hit it. You're, you're never going to get filled in a short at the higher number. So if this, if the spreads 30 cents, I'm just making this up on the open. You're not going to get filled at 134.40. If you're shorting, you're going to get filled at 134.10. You're not going to get filled above that. Um, any other questions? And remember, whenever you're in a short, whatever, or if you're going long, it's the same thing if you're going long. If I say 186, and the, again, the bid ask is, say it's 10 cents, and it's 185.90 by 186, and I'm calling along, you're not going to get filled at 185.90. You hit it at 186, and that's what you're going to get filled. You're not going to get filled at the lower price in a long. It, it doesn't favor you ever with the market makers to get the better price. And everybody pays whatever it is, depending if you're short or long in the, in the bid ask. Uh, we are going to, I don't know what you mean by top-down analysis. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. If you want to write and explain it. 
Okay, let's talk about options. So let, this is the same week. Now we did do some trades last week even though we were off. So there were 15 options, 11 winners, four losers, zero break even. This is an average risk of 1,000. We're gonna go over them all. 12,705 profit, win ratio was 73% here. Now again, there were four losers. So you would have had to risk, you would have had to do all the trades, okay, to make this. You would have had to risk an average of 1,000. I did not have the best exit in any of these, to be honest with you. I was extremely conservative in the last two weeks, really the last month actually, but really the last two weeks going into the July 4th holiday. The last week we had the room and then last week because I knew that we the room, the market was closed on July 4th. The market was closed a half day July 3rd, okay? And then pr no one worked on Friday. Even though the market did have movement, it was low volume. And again, you have to be aware of that when you're trading, particularly with options. If you have an expiration date and you have a holiday bumped right up against the expiration date, say the market was closed Thursday and the expiration is Friday, I mean, it's like you can't ignore that. So I'm showing you here these exits and these were not the best exits, just so you know that. Um, the, my stops... Someone is asking about the stops or limit orders. So if I have the stop, if the stop's 186, then I'm going to get dinged out. But it's a limit order. So if it flies up like a banshee, could I theoretically get stopped out higher than 186? Yes. But most of the stocks that we're trading have tons of volume, millions and millions of shares, and I get filled at my stop. Now, if it's very spready or very thin, again, we're just we're just not doing stocks like this, though, to be honest with you. We're not doing things that are thin or, or, or that we're not going to get filled. But technically, you could get filled above the price that you have the stop. You're going to get hit out, though. Uh, the, if you're talking about the ratings, the ratings are on, you'll learn the ratings on the daily chart. As far as how I take the entries, the entries are on the one-minute chart. These are weekly options. Okay, let's go to, so again, total day trades and options if you did all these trades. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you here the potential with an average risk of $1,000 because so, I get so many questions all the time. I can't tell you how many emails I have from people. They're, they're waiting to trade. They have this much money, this much money till they get this investment, till they get this inheritance. They're, which, you know, that's all well and good. You're missing out on an opportunity to make money with a smaller risk and learning as you go. And so you, you got to get over that in your head. Like everyone wants to get rich. I get it. But, you know, this is real money. So you could have made 18405 And again, these are, these are not the best exits you could have gotten in these trades. We're going to go over them. So again, this was, so we did the Apple. Okay, so if, these are options. So we're just, we're going to move off of the day trades now. We're doing options. Again, you're going to get one year free of both of these if you sign up for the class this week. So we did on 617, we did the Apple. I mean, uh, yeah, 617, we did the Apple 220s. So that was here. Again, stock close here, gapped up, rallied, boom. So let's look at the trade. So I called it on Monday the 17th. And again, I, I had way time, but that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Because if the trade goes, it went. The trade went the first day. 100% is a beautiful profit. And this was, I thought this was cheap. $1.40 sold at 325, you could have risked 1120. And again, you could risk half this. You could have done four contracts. You could have risked 550 some bucks. Profit 1480. Again, going back to it, this is what the newsletter looks like. If you wanna do the options, this is what it looks like. You get the trade, you take the trade when you get it. So usually I send them out in the pre-market. In this case here, I sent them a few minutes after the open, okay? But again, this goes to your email that you would do it and take it. Now, we also did then BA, we did the 175 puts on 618. Stock gap down, closed here, gap down, fell, gap down, boom. So I got out of this, take it to the right, 
this was around 170 and change. So again, if the strike is 175, you're through the strike at 172, 171. Again, sent this on Tuesday the 18th. It's a 50% return on investment. Again, you took it one day, you get out of it the next day. That's good, it's fine. And my goal is trying to get 100% in every trade, but I get out of many trades at 50%. In fact, I'm gonna show you one here. I got out of less than that just because of the fact it was the holiday, even though it did keep going. Then we did the 170s. So I, and again, if you sign up for the newsletter, you're gonna see what I'm doing with these because I, I'm like I called another one, okay, here's the trade. On the day, that I got out of the one, this was in the pre-market, so I called the lower strike. So sometimes I'll stack trades. We did that with Tessa. So like, again, you'll know what I'm doing because if I call another one, you're like, oh, well, I can get out of this one, I can do the next one. Now, this one didn't work though. But again, you book the money in the one, take the next one with the lower strike. This one lost. So you could have taken five contracts, paid two, you would have lost in this one. This never went right. Again, going back to the daily, this was the day I called the trade. It rallied, this was a put, so you want it to fall. It never fell, it started to go, it looked like it was gonna go, it was trying, and then it didn't do it. So this was a bust. Again, the market was rallying here, but this could have gone, but again, it was this day we did it, okay? Again, keeping your risk, keeping your risk in line. Then we did the NVIDIA 140s, stock close here gapped up, didn't go this never went right for me i lost in this again sent this out 849 this never went right for me so again three contracts if you risk 1200 you would have lost in the whole thing there was no this never was positive for me and again you can say well i, I could want to kill it if you kill a trade you would have had to kill it the first day if you kill a trade if it's down 50 percent, you can do that some people are doing that but I just will let you know, I don't do that. So I try to give trades a, a chance to play out. This looked like it was gonna fix itself, you know, right around here. You say, oh my God, it was still sad so long to go. Well, this stock could go like a crazy person. So the fact that it was far away from 140 didn't bother me, but then it just, boom, it ran out of time. But anyways, if you wanna kill trades earlier, you can, I don't. Then we did Bob, but this was a really nice trade. So again, this is very, very unusual that it would take a while to go, but this didn't do anything wrong. It was like a bleeder. 621, we did the 74 puts. Stock close here, gap down, rallied. Do, 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 do. This kept going. Again, we did the 74 puts. I sent them out the 21st. It took a little bit to go, but it was a nice trade. 100% return investment, can't ask for more. Could have held it longer even. It kept falling. Again, a put is a short if you've never done options. A call is a long if you've never done options. So again, even though I'm showing you here the options of the day trades for this period of time here that you could have done everything, you don't have to do both if you don't want to. I'm showing you the potential in using this system, one system to do both options and day trades that you can do both at the same time and you can make money using both and you don't have to risk a huge amount of money and $1,000 is still good. And as you see, this is an active newsletter. The, the day trades were active too. We're in and out in one day, but we're still, we're, we're busy. So it's like, again, if you want to be in a bunch of stuff, you could have two or three things on at once and you have, you know, you have to have the money to do it. But again, it's, 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 it's you have to manage it, you know? Okay, Tessa, when we did the calls, this was so ridiculous here, it was crazy. Uh, 621. Stock close here gapped up. So we had a good entry here. I'm usually early in my trains. We did the 185 calls in Tesla and it went boo. And again, this was a good solid exit on the Tesla 626, it kept going. So I just wanna show you here, we did the 185 calls. I got out of it here, I thought it was a good train. This went over 200. I think it was 202 or 203. On the very last day, you could have held it so that you could have held it longer. We did the 185s, I sent this Friday. And it was a 254% return on investment exit with two days left and it kept going. So, I mean, again, you could have probably made 350, almost 400% if you held it the last day. 
I don't suggest people do that, but I'm showing you here, again, the potential. What I don't do this, but you could have gotten out of half and held half. There are people that are doing that too. I don't trade like that. I just don't. If, if I want to get out of something, I don't want to look at it again. That's kind of how I just, that's just me. That's not a rule. So this was 325, four contracts. Risk was 1300, sold 1150. This was the 626 day. You could have made $3,300 risking 1300. Now you had to hold it for a couple of days, but it never did anything wrong. You would have had to wait, wait, boom, pop. And there it was. But the fact is this went almost 20 points through, through the strike if you held it the last day. In fact, if you held it even into where it closed the last day, it was so far in the money. But you don't know. And you don't take a chances like that in my in my the way that I trade. So I just didn't. Then we did the 478 puts. We shorted the market. This didn't fall through. This was I was up in this though. Stock close here, gap down. This is the market. We shorted the market here. Feels like a million years away um, on the 24th. And I was up in this trade. I didn't get out. Some people did get out. I wasn't even up 50%, I don't think. If I was, I didn't pay attention to it. Anyways, I ended up losing in this because it didn't fall. We did this the 24th. This was completely down. It tried to go the very last day. It fell and it was, you know, again, this market has been so strong, but we did short it. And it didn't work and I lost in this. Then we did the Tesla 190 call, 624. Oh, here. We, then, we, then, then again, we got in the other strike. And then same, same exit day. Same exit day, the 626. We had the extension. We did the 190s. Again, call this right of the open on the Monday. Great trade, 220% return on investment. If you risked 1,000, you could have made $2,200. And again, you could have made more if you held it the last day, which you could have done. Again, I didn't do this. You could have got out of the 185s and you could have held the 190s. But again, it's just, it was up so, this is a lot of money to make in a trade in like two, two days. It just is. Then we did the spy puts. Again, I lost in these two. We did the 543 puts. Completely lost in that, never went my direction. Then last week, again, it was a holiday week, we did WFC, well, we did the 626, I'm sorry. It was the same week. Stock close here, gap down, gap down again here. Again, we're through the strike. We did the 57 puts, okay? And it worked. Again, the banks are, you know, they're the banks, if I'm doing a bank, I don't care if it's a call or a put, 100% is like a lot because these banks, if something costs 60 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents, that anything that's under a dollar, again, these have, there's so much volume. You could do them. We're doing them. They have volume. But I'm just saying lower your expectations for the return on investment if you're doing banks or anything that costs a, a, a penny something. Again, we did them because they have volume to do them. And you could have made $700 on this, but it's 54% return investment. And you have to be aware of the fact that it also was through the strike. That was a nice trade. Then we did the BAC. We did puts in the BAC just like we did the day trade. Stock closed here, gap down, open, fell. I got out of this the same day. It went, kept going. You could have held it the second day. You could have made more. Again, I did not get the best exits in my options in the last week because I was aware of the holiday. I wanted to book money. I was very concerned about booking money before the holiday. We did the 39 puts on Wednesday, the 26th. Again, you do the trade when you get it. It was 70% return investment. I thought this was a lot. It probably was 100% by the second day. 45 cents for one, which is so funny. You could have done 10 and spent $450 and made 70%. That's a good trade. Again, this whole idea, this misnomer is what I'm trying to to say it's a it's a falsehood that people think that they have to risk all kinds of money um, in order to make money trading, even to make a living. Again, you have to be doing the trains. You have to be getting good quality trains. This was a huge one. The 626 day, the day that it had this, this one here, um, what time did I call this? I call this, this was crazy late. At two o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, which is really, really rare, I would call a trade at two o'clock, but I called the Tesla 200s that expired last Friday. Anyways, it was just so crazy that I even called this um, at late in the day, but I knew that it was gonna go to 200 and I called it out for the fifth. The fifth, the stock was up over 250. So this went more than 50 points for the strike if you held it the last day. 
or if you even held it the Wednesday before the July 4th, which I didn't. I thought I had a good exit. I thought I had a great exit. And again, I booked the money. It was 94% return investment. But if you held this, this was completely insane. I don't know what it was worth. It was worth over $50 though. So I bought it at 360 and sold it at seven. And if you, I wanted to get out of it before the weekend actually too. But anyways, this was worth over $50. How do I know it was more than $50 for the strike? So anything that's over the strike will be worth a minimum of that. This was like insanity. I mean, this whole trade that I caught in this test that we were doing was insanity. I don't know anyone that held this till Friday. Probably somebody did. I haven't sent any emails since I got back from the holiday. But I just want to show you again, you know, booking money consistently is something that I do. I think it's important and I teach you to do it. But if you want to get out of some and hold some, you can't lose when you do that and you can get more of a move. Again, it's a personal preference that I don't do that, but you could. Any upper limit on a price of a stock would I trade SCMI, for example? I'm going to do something if I like the gap, if it, if it has volume in the option, and if it is I mean, years ago when Amazon, I did Amazon when it cost $50 for one, which was $5,000 for one, if it fits my parameters to do one contract, if I'm risking <coughs> $8,000 on average in my option and it costs $80, I'm not going to go over that. As far as day trades, if you're asking me about trading something that costs, for example, more than $1,000 as a day trade, I'm probably not doing that. It's not a rule. Again, could you? Yes. But you right off the bat know that your spread, not forget the cost of the stock, David, the spread on something that costs, even Netflix. Netflix almost got over $700 on Friday. Okay, which is crazy, because remember the stock split, and Netflix was at 705 was a high in Netflix back in 2015. It, it, that was the last time this, that stock was anywhere near this price. Then the stock split, and then it now it's gone all the way back there where it was. Here we are, it's nine years later. It's crazy. So the, the spread on Netflix at 600 something a share to day trade, I will day trade Netflix because I'm very familiar with trading it. So I will, it's expensive, okay? But I know right out of the gate, the spread could be a dollar, okay? So you have to account for the spread. And then I say, okay, my stop could be literally $15 even regardless of how much size I could take. So again, if this if the stop is $15 and you're doing, if you just wanna buy 100 shares, I'm just making this up if you're day trading Netflix, even if you have the buying power, you're risking $1,500 right out of the gate just for the 100 shares. So again, not that it's not worth it, you know, cause Netflix, if it's a good gap, could go 70 100 points on the day so you know that is something i'll day train but i mean you know something that's over a thousand dollars a share the spread's going to be so wide the stop's going to be so big when you get to very 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 expensive stocks sometimes it just doesn't make sense to day trade them and it makes only sense to do them as an option but some stocks don't have options with volume so then I'm not gonna do them for that reason as an option. Even though as a day trade, maybe it does have volume. You know what I mean? So. But again, if your rate's good, technically you could do it. You could do it no matter what. So anyways, this was a good train. Then we did the mu. I got out of this early too. And again, I was thinking about the holiday stock close here, gap down, open, dropped. This mu went all the way down here, went all the way down, broke 130, went down to 127 and change. I got out of the mu. It was, we did the 132 puts. I got out of it and made 40%. I did it and got out of it the same day. And again, I just wanted to be out of it before the holiday, for the weekend. But this actually went, and I don't know what this was worth, but this was $5 in the money through this. So this was worth at least $5. It was worth more than $5 and I get out of it early. So this was well more, more than 
again, you will decide where you want to get out of these, what you can live with. But I think over the holiday, I did the right thing. Then we did the Apple calls. These kept going too. I don't know where the high of Apple was Friday, but I know it was crazy. Again, I got out of this before the holiday, thought it was a good train. We did the 215 Apple calls on Thursday the 27th, made 120%, got out. Got out July 2nd before the holiday. It kept rallying. It rallied on Friday. I don't know where this was. It was insane. I think it was 11, I think it was 225, 226 or something this was Friday. So this was worth probably 10 bucks. This was worth twice as much on Friday and where I sold it probably. It was over 200%. So again, my point is that, again, you can make money doing trades with an average risk of 1,000. Then we did the 205 Teslas. This was absolutely the gap of the week. We did this on the 28th. And again, beautiful move here. I thought I had a fabulous exit here. This stock ran up over 250 plus and was almost $50 in the money. It was 252, I think I want to say, or something on Friday, which was ridiculous, which was insane. It's insane. We did it Friday, and it was a 381% return on investment profit with an exit on the second. <coughs> so I have no idea what this was on the, it was worth more than $40. It was probably worth $45. I'm at, uh, this was probably double this. You probably could have made over eight grand in this, risking $1,000. So again, everybody that did this trade made money and everybody did this trade made a lot of money because I did email people about this trade, but I got out, you know, on the second and it kept going. So my whole point here is you can earn a living trading. You do not have to risk a crazy amount. It has to do with the checklist. The checklist helps me. It's going to help you. You got to learn it. This is you checking yourself. Again, because a lot of times when people are trading, they're all over the place. The checklist is the double, triple check. Sometimes you can look at something and say, oh my God, I love it, I love it, I love it, it's fabulous. Why do you love it? Do you even know why you love it? You love it because somebody on CNBC is talking about it? That's not a reason to love something. Again, the, what I'm doing is looking at the daily chart and I'm looking at technical analysis. It's advanced technical analysis in the gap where I'm trying to predict the direction the stock's gonna go after I see the gap. So I'm not predicting the gap itself. I mean, I don't know, you know, JPM is earnings Friday morning. I don't know where it's gonna gap. I don't even know if it's gonna gap up or it's gonna gap down. But after I see the gap in the pre-market on Friday, then I will read it, and then I will determine if I wanna trade it long or short. And again, this helps you. So again, with the options alone, if you just want to do the options, you can open up a $2,000 account trading options as a cash account. You don't need a margin account to trade options. But if you want to do the day trades and you want to do the margin trades all at the same time, you would need a margin account. You could do one account. You could have two separate accounts. That's totally, totally up to you. But again, it's the whole point where you're using the same system when you trade. Any questions here as I'm going along? Any other questions? Again, I see some familiar faces. Patty, I see you. Patty, I haven't seen you for ages. Dan, I see you. I don't know if you have any questions. Danny, you were going to email me your phone number. I was going to call you tomorrow. Bradley, I don't think I ever saw you at any webinars. If you want to ask me questions, Now's your chance. And again, we were talking about this earlier, about getting your year on track. It's not too late. Because again, even if you're down for the year trading, you see how you start trading while you can make it up in a short period of time. And really, Tesla was such a nice call, even if you didn't even hold the whole thing till Friday, which I didn't. You know, you see how you have big trades like this. You're like, oh my God. And it, and it covers the cost of the class. So many people are worried about spending the money that I charge for the class People should be looking at the value they get in the education to use a system for the rest of their life, not about the upfront cost. And when I do specials like this where you get the support of the training room and the options newsletter for such a long time for a year, that allows you not to be rushed, to take your time, to start out small as a beginner like I'm talking about here, and 
go and learn and do it slowly. So you don't feel like rush, 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 like I got to quick make the money back. That's, you, you shouldn't even have that mentality. It's you want to learn it so you can do it and you're following me and then you don't need me and then you can do it for yourself. So you can trade both stocks and options with your system. Yes. And that is what we just reviewed with everything here in these in this last week. And not all the trades were the same. Some were overlaps. Again, people always ask me this. I don't always um, call the same trades. So we did go long Tesla as a day trade, and we did do calls in Tesla as an option, but I don't always do the same thing. Actually, we did that with Mew too. Oh, we did that with BAC. Yeah, we did that with BAC. So sometimes there is an overlap, but not always. But I will say, if you're on the options newsletter and you're in the room and I'm talking about XYZ stock, whatever it is, if I'm doing the same thing in both, then you know, then you should do it. Because you know it's a really good gap if I want to do it two different ways. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, don't miss that one. Like, Tesla Wood is a good example of that one. <laughs> you know. Anyways, get a plan of action to make your dreams come true. You need a plan. How are you going to do it? You know, I mean, it's just like, like if you were going to move. You say, I'm going to move and I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to uh, uh, buy a house or maybe you just want to move into a different apartment and you're renting. It's like you need a plan of action. You can't just pick up today and move. You need to find an apartment. You need to or hire a realtor. Then you have to call the moving company. Then you have to schedule the move. Then you have to pack. Then you have to take time off work. Then you have to get insurance. You know, it's just like any anything that you want to do, you need a plan of action. I'm a very, 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 very planned and organized person you can tell that just by the fact that I look at 26 things every single day. That's a lot of things. You know, I, again, if I could look at 126 things, I probably would. Okay, I haven't added anything else to my system past the time that I developed this here. But, I mean, like if you open up my medicine cabinet, I mean, all my nail polishes are lined up in order of color. Like, I'm just like, I'm very organized. You open up my closet, everything's stacked you know lined up in hangers i'm i'm an organized person so i like to know before i risk any money if i want to do it and i want to know the rating and i want to know where it could go and i like i'm convincing myself when i do the rating if it's worth me even risking the money or i shouldn't risk it and again that's the same thing that you should be doing too you know what I'm saying? You're, you're taking the time in the pre-market doing the points to convince yourself. Now, again, you could listen to me talk in the room to convince you, but you should be convincing yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, David, I, I'll write down your number and I will give you a call. Um, if you want me to call you, I can call you tomorrow after the room. There's something else I was going to say. We're talking about a plan. Also, if you plan, you won't make crazy gambling decisions. You know what I'm saying? Again, if you get up in the morning and you rate the gap and it doesn't rate good and you say, oh my God, there's nothing to do today. You know what you should do? Shut it down. Just turn it off. Shut down your platform. Walk away. Go take a walk in the park don't get sucked into trading if there isn't anything good because again you could have the tv on or somebody could say oh this one looks really good you know and it's not and you know it's not because you rated it and it didn't rate good and you shouldn't do it anyways the golden gap course is a complete system to use to train this is the class that i teach once a month this is a full two-day course on how to strategically find pick and play stocks at our professional bearish gaps the class is online. You could be anywhere in the world and take it. Now, I normally do this class once a month. I'm doing a class in July, which is this weekend, July 13th and 14th. This is a good class because earnings season starts Friday. So you will be able to learn and then start trading with us the entire earnings season. The class tuition is $69.99 US dollars. Class is online. You could be anywhere in the world and take it. Then I'm doing a class in August. And then I'm not doing an online class in September because I'm doing a live class in New York City in September. 
if you're interested in that, that is more money. There are dates for that and information. It's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but I will not be doing any live class or any online class this September. So if you want to do this class, it's a good class to do because you're going to get in for earnings season. Otherwise, it's August, and then the next class online is not till October because I'm, I'm not doing two classes in September because the class in September is a live class in New York. I already have people signed up for that, and that's a big deal. That's going to take up a lot of my time that month planning. But anyways, this class is online, okay? So you could be anywhere. The trends course is July 30th. If you want to do this class, you save $500 if you pay for this class at the same time. It's only 1000 more. $79.99, you could still get the one year free of the room and the newsletter with this. And again, the Shark Week special is going on through Friday. And it's really funny, it was so busy with July 4th, I completely forgot that it was Shark Week until uh, last night when I saw the shows on. Um, I will call you tomorrow, David. Any other questions? So I hope I got my point across today which is that you can trade day trades options. You can do both. You can risk an average of $1,000 per trade. Again, even if you say, well, Melissa, $5,000 a week on average day trades, 20 grand a month. Again, if you do the options added to that, you're gonna make more than that. So we talked about 18,000 for the, this period of week with both options and day trades. Again, these weren't even the best exits in the options. You, you're gonna, you will get there. Even if you're like, I really need to make this much. I need to make more, I need to make more. You gotta learn it. You gotta start with what you have. You have to start with the amount of money you have. And if it's less than this, then you risk less. Again, some people are trading options and they're doing one contract, you know? Any other questions here? Again, especially from the new people. Some of you I do not recognize. If you want to email me, I'm gonna put my email down here. You don't have to be afraid to email me or call me. You can always email me. You can always call me, 929-3200 gap. So we'll see what where this week goes, where the market goes. But again, you know, whether the market keeps rallying or whether the market falls and drops, it started to fall off a little bit late today. I'm looking at doing specific stocks. So I don't trade the market every day and I don't even trade the market every week. So I find that stocks are more fun to play through and trade. Tesla is just a great example that we just happen to have, but there's other examples and you don't wanna miss the next Tesla. There will be another trade like that, undoubtedly during this earning season. Good to see some of you. Good to see you, Patty. I don't know what you've been up to. And some of you that are new, email me if you have questions. I'm going to let everyone go. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening. You're welcome.